Welcome to the seventh video in a series of tutorials on EPA Method 334.0, Expectations for Public Water Systems in Pennsylvania. This video will cover the use of secondary standards for verifications of the GRAB method as they relate to Method 334.0, as well as documentation using the DEP form. Secondary standards vary significantly in form and application from primary standards. Secondary standards take the form of a sealed container of colored liquid or gel. While primary standards can be used universally, secondary standards are manufacturer, instrument, chemical, and analysis range specific. Not all manufacturers produce secondary standards. Each set will be accompanied with a certificate from the manufacturer that certifies an acceptable range of readings that the individual standards should produce. Unlike primary standards, there is no dilution or preparation required for secondary standards and the containers should not be opened. Secondary standards can only be used to assess the optics and sensor of applicable meters. While secondary standards are available for various chemical methods, Standard Methods 4500 CLG is the only free or total chlorine method that is covered by secondary standards. Method 334.0 does not require the use of secondary standards, but they are highly recommended and water systems are strongly encouraged to use them. They provide a quick way to check for instrument drift on a more frequent routine basis in between primary standard checks. The use of secondary standards does not replace the need for quarterly aqueous primary check standard analysis for routine calibration checks. Each analyzer must be checked quarterly using a primary standard. The meter should be verified with the secondary standards immediately following the initial calibration verification process. In the future, when secondary standards are replaced when they expire, the verification of the new replacement set of secondary standards can occur after a routine quarterly verification. The initial reading of each secondary standard, which is read immediately following either initial or routine quarterly primary standard verification, is used as the expected concentration. This initial reading must be within the ranges provided by the manufacturer on the certificate of analysis. The acceptance criteria for secondary standards is more stringent than aqueous check standards. Secondary standards must be within plus or minus 10% of the initial reading. So the acceptable range is calculated by determining plus or minus 10% of that initial reading. The acceptable range that you calculate will be used during subsequent verifications with secondary standards. It is important to note that it is a paired data set that is unique to each individual meter and set of secondary standards. It must be calculated individually for each meter and lot of secondary standards. Secondary standards must be stored according to manufacturer recommendations. Temperatures above or below the recommended range can cause the individual standards to crack, shatter, or the gel to peel away. If this happens, the standards must be replaced. For gel standards, storing them on their side can also cause the gel to peel away from the cell. Secondary standards have an expiration date. They should not be used beyond that date. Operators with access to secondary standards should verify their colorimeter no less frequently than every seven days. A job aid for secondary standard verifications, which includes the steps reviewed in this video, is available at this link, which can be found in the video description below. Use the DEP form for secondary standard verifications to document your weekly verifications of your instrument. I'll be referencing this form throughout the rest of this video. This and all of DEP's Method 334.0 forms can be found on eLibrary. Begin by completing the general information at the top of the form. Record your PWS ID, system name, the current month and year, and your analyzer, manufacturer, model, and serial number. You will also need to record information about your secondary standards, including manufacturer, which should match analyzer manufacturer, the parameter they are intended for, which should be chlorine, and the lot number and expiration date. Next, you will need to determine the initial reading and calculate the acceptable range for your set of secondary standards with your analyzer. This should be done immediately after an initial or routine quarterly primary standard verification. Let's look more closely at how to complete this part of the form. 
Find the manufacturer's certificate of analysis for your set of secondary standards. Do not put these values on your form. They will only be used to determine if your initial reading is within the recommended range for each standard. Wipe each cell with Kim wipes prior to zeroing or reading. Start by inserting the blank standard into your colorimeter. Be sure to insert each standard with the alignment mark positioned according to manufacturer recommendations. Zero your meter using the blank standard. Then proceed to read each of the standards using the same technique. These results will be your initial reading for each standard once you confirm that they are within the manufacturer's recommended range on the certificate of analysis. Record the initial reading in the appropriate field on the secondary standard verification form for each of the standards. Using the initial reading obtained for each standard, calculate the acceptable range that will be used for tracking purposes. The acceptable range for each standard is plus or minus 10%. Using 0.20 mg per liter as an example, a range of 0.18 to 0.22 mg per liter is calculated as plus or minus 10%. This becomes the limits of the acceptable range for this specific meter and secondary standard. Record these numbers in the acceptable range field for the appropriate standard. This process is then repeated for each of the other standards in the set. These ranges are specific to the colorimeter and set of secondary standards used and do not apply to other combinations of meters and standards. Use these ranges to track secondary standard verifications until the standards expire or the meter is replaced. Let's review the key points from this video. The use of secondary standards is not required by Method 334.0, but is highly recommended. They do not replace the need to conduct quarterly primary standard verifications. Secondary standards verify the accuracy of the meter in between quarterly primary verifications. The recommended frequency for secondary standard verification is at least every seven days. For documentation, you can use the DEP record keeping form for secondary standards. This form, as well as the other Method 334.0 forms, can be found on DEP's eLibrary. In the next video in this series, we will review the Method 334.0 requirements for online analyzers, including initial verification, initial demonstration of capability, and routine calibration checks using comparative grab sample analysis.